Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use generative fill that's currently found in the beta version of Photoshop to repair damaged photos. Now, if you're not familiar with the beta version of Photoshop, stay to the end, I'll explain what it is and how you could download it. Now, we're going to be working on this image. This is an old photo of my mother taken way before I was born, and you can see that there is some significant damage to it. What you need to do first is select the damage in the photo. You could use any of the selection tools to do that, but I think you're most often going to be using the lasso tool. When you use the lasso tool, go to the tool properties and make sure that you're in add mode. That way you'll be able to select more than one thing at the same time on the image. Now, what you need to do is just get a rough selection of the damage. So you don't have to select the damage very, you know, like exactly. You just get a rough selection of the damage. So I'm going to do this large uh, crease first. I'm just going to start here, come off the image, come down around and come in and get that little piece of damage there and come around this way. You can see how I'm just roughly outside of it. I'm not trying to get it too exact. Come up here and then close our selection off there. So we have that selected. Let's do this crease over here. And because I'm in add mode, I'll be able to select more than one thing. Let's get this little piece of damage there, maybe a little chunk there. There's this scratch here. There's a little crease or scratch right here, very light, but I'm going to get that as well. Uh, there's one over here in the water. Get that. There's one way, whoops, don't want to do that. There's one way over here in the corner. Okay, let's get it more in the middle. If you ever mess up like that, like on my magic mouse, I just actually moved. You could hit like command zero to fit it to screen. Command minus makes it smaller. Command plus makes it larger. So there's that. I think I select most of the damage. Maybe right in here, there's some really light kind of markings. But for this video, let's say that's good enough. Now, once you do that, the contextual taskbar, which is this little thing right here, will have a button that says generative fill. Just click on that button. And when you do, the contextual taskbar will reposition itself down here. That's going to ask you to suggest something that you'd like to generate. Don't write anything there. Leave that blank and just click generate. Now at this point, it's taking this image and it's sending it up to Adobe servers. And Adobe's, Adobe servers are using AI to fix this damage. When it's done, you'll have three options. Here's option one. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? We'll go to option two, which is right here. And here's option three. Now you can see that each one changes her dress slightly and changes the water behind her a bit. So you could choose which one you think is best. And I really think that generative fill is going to re revolutionize photo restoration. I really think it's that good. I mean, as you could see, there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Now, of course, generative fill doesn't do anything to get rid of like the grain or reduce the grain or to increase contrast or to fix a discolored image or, you know, to make a blurry image sharper. I do recommend that you use uh, Topaz Labs Photo AI. Photo AI uh, will really take care of all those things that I mentioned outside of the uh, discoloration. You're going to have to use something else to fix discoloration. But, um, if a small area is discolored, you could use generative fill to fix that. But if the whole image is yellowed, you're going to have to use a different uh, restoration method to fix that. But overall, uh, Topaz Labs Photo AI will make the image sharper to reduce any grain. It also will slightly increase contrast. And if you need to make it larger, you could use Photo AI to make the image larger as well. Because most often, uh, scans of old images are relatively small, low resolution scans. And if you want to print it, you're going to need a higher resolution version of that image to print. So in those instances, use Topaz Labs Photo AI to take care of all those things. You could also use Gigapixel AI uh, to make the image larger, and it also will sharpen it a bit as well. I have videos demonstrating how to fix older images in both Photo AI and Gigapixel AI. I'll have links to them, them in the description below this video. Now, as far as the beta version of Photoshop, if you're not familiar with it, if you're a Creative Cloud subscriber, you're eligible to try out many of their uh, apps in beta. And what that means is 
They're not really ready for the public yet, but they often have new features such as generative fill. So you could give them a try. The downside is they may be buggy and they may not work perfectly. So to get the beta version of Photoshop, what you need to do is open up your Creative Cloud app. Once you do that, go to the Apps tab. It's the second from the left at the top. And then scroll down to Beta Apps. And you can see that I have two beta apps installed on my computer, Photoshop Beta and Bridge Beta. There's others available. If you want to download one, just click on Install. And it will then guide you through the install process very easy. And it also will keep it updated as well once it's installed. So when they come out with new versions, you'll always have the current version. So that's it. Uh, if you have our Creative Cloud subscriber, download that beta version of Photoshop and give it a whirl for yourself. And by the way, you do not have to delete the current version of Photoshop to run the beta version of Photoshop. You could have them both on your computer at the same time and you could run them at the same time. So don't worry in case something in the beta version of Photoshop is buggy and it's something you do all the time. Uh, don't think that you have to delete it to reload the current version of Photoshop. You could have them both on your computer and you're good to go. So that's it. Generative fill in Photoshop. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.